which has been moving like from the comfort zone like towards um, like acceptance. Um, a, lot, a lot of people like when they're talking about starring, this is the kind of two. That is kind of like the two zones that people think about. Either when you're comfort zone, like you're hiding from the stuff, like you're fine, but like you could be happier. <laughs> or over here, you know, acceptance, everything is great. Um, <laughs> And what a lot of people think, like, is, is that, like, if they could just, like, kind of take that leap, and, like, then they would just end up over here. And, like, however, like, one of the things about, like, any kind of journey, like, is that, like, it's never just a case of walking from one point to the other. Um, it's a journey where, that you need to jump over obstacles, and, like, where, like, you take, like, two steps forward and then five back. And um, where you're angry, where you're frustrated, where you're shameful, and where you, how you have moments of joy and moments of, yes, I can do this, but then something else happened. It's not a straight line, like it's all over the place. And, and this is what I've come to like accept, like it's never going to be like an easy just kind of stepping into, okay, like now everything's going good. However, as long as I take like, my small steps, and just work my way like, along the line <coughs> to make my life so much better like, and I can make myself so much happier. So, um, a little bit about me, um, as I said, I'm Lynn. Um, I've been involved in what, with the British Animal Association for about, about I'm, like, 12 years now. I'm, like, I got involved like, when I was a teenager, like, when I was like, my lowest, uh, like, her, her, like, I couldn't we talk to people, I was backing out of opportunities. And one of my friends, mother, saw this thing, like a, like a drama group, in which was run by uh, the British Summer Association. And she thought, okay, let them like drama, and then stammers. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna pick up this leaflet and I'm just gonna give it to her. <laughs> and, and I decided, yeah, I'm gonna go along go to these workshops and see what's going on. And all this happened, like, I ended up like in a room full of people who sat there for the first time, and it was the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> and it was just one of these moments where I was like, yes, like, I'm not alone, like, there right. are other people, like, and this is possible. Um, and since then, I'm, I'm now like the vice chair like, of the Scottish um, like, Diamond Network. Um, I've helped to put on like open days for them. I've spoken at events. Um, I was part of the like, kind of organising committee, like kind of, kind of for the BSA conference this year, like in Cardiff. And and this some um, like I helped to organise um, a youth weekend um, in Italy. And um, like where like people who sang from like eight different countries all came together like, in this tiny. Of Italian village, <laughs> and just spent a week together, and I was running. I went there like a drama program for that, so, so I just kind of come like a kind of full circle, which is nice. Um, and at this weekend, like, and something happened that made me think, like, because we were doing an exercise, like, where we were looking at like, kind of lots of qualities, like honesty, love, passion, and we were saying, like, what do we want to work on this year? Like, what would we like to like, improve on? And I chose um, like self-acceptance as mine because that's something I had struggled with, something I'm still working on. And I shared this with the group and went on about my day, but then later on, um, like one of the participants came up to me and, and well, I just want to say like, I was very surprised like, kind of, that you chose um, like self-acceptance because I've always seen you as one of the most self-accepting people I know. And that kind of inspires me. So like, I wonder why, why you don't feel like you have that yet. And I just had while I'm working on it, but like I still have like a like a some way to go with it. 
And while I'd love to be over here in the Philly Seven zone, I'm still kind of in the middle of somewhere because there is still a couple more places I can go. Um, however, there have been points in my life where I've moved up on the line. Um, I've always been open about my stammer. And partially like because I didn't learn it was possible to be like a covert like until I was 16. And by that point everybody knew anyway, so <laughs> so I didn't really <laughs> And also like with my parents and like they'd always just and they'd always just be like, oh look I get on with it, like you can do it, it's fine. Um like, which is great. And then like at the same time I came out like I bulldozed into situations and then panicked. <laughs> Um, but like it's all of the kind of little things that I decided to change, like it's stuff like I can as, as like you said, like ordering like a coffee. I would go into like a coffee shop and I'd be like, right, like I want a medium hazelnut latte, medium hazelnut latte, medium hazelnut latte. Like I get up to the counter and I'd be like, a large cappuccino, please. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what in the moment I was like, yes, I can say that, so that's what I'm having. I don't really want it, but I'm having it. <laughs> and then it got to like a point about halfway through uni that I was like, wait, how am I doing this to myself? Like, why am I forcing myself to have something I don't want just because and just because I feel like I can't stand or I can get what I want? Mm -hmm. I started forcing myself to say it. It's my kind of stepping a little bit across. And just taking that little step, like it seems like kind of tiny to a lot of people, but it's massive. And to me, like, and it proved like I could like kind of say what I wanted, I could like kind of get the drink I wanted. Um, and there's other stuff, as I said, like I'm interested in drama. Like I had a kid, I was up on stage all the time, doing it, completely fine. Hit puberty, and the stammer spike, then no. Um, I moved backstage, started working backstage, um, which I loved, but like it wasn't being on stage. Um, and then like, when I was 24, I moved to Glasgow, like, and I kind of thought this is a new start. I'm going to join a drama group, I'm going to, um, I'm going to audition. Uh, even if I don't get cast, like, I'm going to audition. And I did. And I was cast. <laughs> like it's these small things that just give you that little boost. I'm like, I'm like I'm giving presentations as well. Like Ten years ago, never would have been here. So like it, taking small steps, like started with going along like to like a sport group and talking in the sport group, and then it turned into like running a support group. I'm talking in front of a group, like, and then it came to doing events like this and talking to like a crowd which was safe who understood that I stammered. And now, like, in my job, I give presentations like, on a regular basis. Um, I, I did a one hour like, a training session, like, kind of just today. Oh, well, like I said, I'm in front of people, I can talk for an hour. And I stammered, but I wasn't fluent. However, I went in and I said just about, you know, I do have a stammer. So there will be some pauses, but like, it's fine. I'm just giving you time to take everything in. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that's a really good, like, icebreak curve. <laughs> like, it's like, like, addresses, like, the elephant in the room. Like, it tells them that I'm fine with it. Like, it tells them, like, not to worry about it. So that's really, really helped me. So where am I now? If this is complete self-acceptance, like, no, I'm probably about here. I'm getting there. Like, I've moved so far. However, I still have a way to go. Because in the last week, I've worried about like, ordering stuff in restaurants in case I stammer. Um, I've worried about like, kind of calling across a room to a friend just in case I stammered and it got lost on the way. Um, I was in. In Warsaw like, over the weekend, like, I was worried about like, going into a shop and getting something. Hey, because because with the language like and the stammer, I was like, well, it's not going to happen. And yet, like I still did it. 
however, like the thoughts are still there, like the mindset's still there. So that's what I need to work on now. So, so like I'm on my line. I'm not completely there, but like I'm getting there. However, standing here right now, I'm definitely out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.